Gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama Only stay surrounded by them people if you know they solid Elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit Trying to learn some game, it's heavy, y'all gon' talk about it No Deanna, speak that shit that everybody vouching Ain't no more excuses valid, get up off the couch and get up in your bag To your bank account, need an accountant Yo, 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 welcome back to the greatest show on earth, the Millionaire Mindsets Podcast. I am your host, Xavier, and today we got a um, super live, super dope episode on the way for y'all. And uh, before we get to start, before we get this episode started, I would like to advise all the listeners and the watchers to please like, um, comment, subscribe, leave that five-star rating, and a review. All those things I would super, super appreciate it. So getting right to the show, y'all know I ain't a, um, a, a, a small talk person. I like to get straight to it, man. So get get straight to the show. We got, I got a super um, special guest, man. He going crazy online, going crazy in business. So we had to have him on the show. His name is Ramel. Welcome to the show, bro. What's good? Yo, I'm blessed to be here, man. I'm excited. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Definitely. For sure. For sure, man. And, yeah. and, and, get, and getting right to it. So for the people who may not... Um, who may not know who you are, do you mind just giving us some background on yourself? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So 30 years old, born and raised, Brooklyn. Story like anybody, you know, welfare, food stamps, uh, play basketball, rapping. I was trying to find every single thing to make money like anybody right. could. Got into real estate eight years ago. Okay. Uh, my very first deal that I got was a brownstone in Brooklyn. So it was a two-family from New York, right? Got it under contract for $590,000. Put about $40,000 work, work into it. Sold it for one point two million. Made six figures. My very first deal. At that point, it was first. like the rest. <laughs> at that point, just kept doubling down, buying more properties, and you know, that's where we at now. Got over three hundred units, and we just trying to impact you got three, the world. You got three hundred units. Over three hundred units. Oh, yeah, shit, man, that's that, that's cold, yeah. bro. Salute, salute. But yeah, yeah. Let, let's let's go um into that first one really quick. So, yeah. where you you was you was twenty two. At that time, no, I, well, I started when I was 22, but I didn't get my first deal until I was 25. Like, the first oh, three damn. years, I was just hustling, right? Marketing, Marketing sending out right. letters, cold calling, going to meetups. So it took you three years to get a deal? It took me three years to get my first deal. Whoa, <laughs> but hey, that's, you know, that's yeah. so crazy, but at the same time, that's a, uh, I think that's a valuable lesson to everybody that's watching, because we know nowadays everybody wants to get into real estate, everybody wants to be a wholesaler, and people will quit within yeah. that first month, yeah. 30, 60 days, if there ain't no deal done. That's a fact. So the fact that it took you three years, like imagine if you stopped three months in, no deal. It took you three yeah. years to get a deal. Yeah, bro. It's, it's a numbers game, but I, I understood that. So like being in mentorship, you understand it's a numbers game. So mm -hmm. as long as I keep at it, I know the deal going to come. So mm -hmm. then I started putting myself in position. This is what happened, which is crazy, right? I went to over 50 real estate meetups. So I'm going to different events. I go on Eventbrite. You could type in real estate meetups. Right, right, right. So I'm right. going to meetups, uh, learning, building relationships and all of that cool stuff. So I end up getting this deal on the contract, right? Um, the family was going through a pre-foreclosure. So, if, you know, a pre-foreclosure, yeah, yeah, they was yeah. going behind their rent. So I got the property. I teach people how to buy real estate with no money down, commercial real estate. And everybody be like, how you do it with no money down? And I, I did it with no money because when I started out, I was working at Pepsi. I was making fifty thousand a year, so you know, like you go to okay, you okay. go to a grocery store, you see the person stocking the shelves. Yeah, yeah, that was me. Yeah. I was every every morning, four or five in the morning, right? So I, I wanted to get out of that. So um, I still was working. So even though I, I, it took me three years, I still had a job at the same time. So I wasn't out here just hurting, but I knew I wanted to get to that goal. So I got the property on the contract. I went to over fifty meetups, right? Finally got somebody that said they was going to invest in me. They became my capital partner. So he put up. The entire five hundred ninety thousand dollars. I ain't put no money out of my pocket. I just you had put to up all him, the bread. All the bread. I just had to give him fifty percent equity in the deal. So when we flipped it, I only got fifty percent of the profits. That's why I walked away with one hundred fifty-seven. Okay, that makes sense. How you even? How you meet, dude? Like going to meetups. So I just meet up. Yeah, I would just go on Eventbrite and I would type in real estate meetups in my area, and I would go hand out my business card, introduce myself. Mm -hmm. I end up finding a mentor. She's old enough to be my grandmother, like older lady in the game. And she connected me to this other investor that, you know, I showed him the deal. He's like, yo, it makes sense. You know, when you got a good deal, right. the money follow. Yeah. Anybody willing to, you know, partner with you. Yo, that, that's, that's, that's several gems that you just gave. Because yeah. um, I've, said, I've said that on the show previously. Because, you know, people always ask. They always DM me and stuff like that. Like, man, if there's not no things going on in my area, like, how can I get out here and network and meet people? And I know I used to use Inventbrite all the time. I'm yeah. like... That's that you could go to Eventbrite in any city you in, unless you're in a super small city where it's not too much going on. You go on Eventbrite, type in real estate meetup, 
real estate something, and it's going to be something yeah. most likely that's pop yeah. up that you could just pull up to. A lot of the events be for free, and you could just go in there and politic with people. So that's that's a gem in itself. But yeah. that you said the first the uh, first check you got, you said it was a one hundred fifty seven thousand. So one hundred fifty seven thousand. So at this time, you at Pepsi, right? I'm at Pepsi. And what's funny, it was crazy. Is yeah. um, I had a homie that that Pepsi job. We used to when I was like 18, 19, we used to try to get in that joint so bad. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember I had a homie that got in. He was like, "Yeah, I'm making like a rack a week at like 18. 18. I'm like, "Bro, what? Let me. Yeah. I need to get in that." So that's crazy. Yeah. So you was at Pepsi. You did. You uh, you got the check. So in that moment, was you like? I'm 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 up. I'm out. Or what 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 happened? Break Hell it down. Yeah, I'm up now. You can't tell me nothing, right? Because I was making fifty five thousand a year at Pepsi. So to to get a check for one hundred and fifty seven thousand, that was three years worth of work. You know what I'm saying? What I what I would have made at Pepsi. So I'm up now in my head. I, I, I'm lit. So I, I got the check. I go to the bank. This is just what happens. Crazy. I went to the bank. I'm depositing the check in, the, in my account, right? And the bank are like, oh. Calling me by my last name. Hey, you want to sit down? We want to talk to you about our money market savings account. Like, give me all of this customer service that I'd never got in my life. So now I got people in my ear. Um, I, I bought another property and I'm moving fast, right? P overpaying contractors, you know, right, really not evaluating deals the right way, and practically went broke again, bro. For real? Like, went broke, all the money gone, like stuck it into another property, overpaid for it. Um, but it was a learning experience. I, I like that helped me get to the point that I am at today because I had to make it, lose yeah, it. Now I'm like, all right, now I gotta be smart. And, 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 and that's part of the game. That's another thing that I yeah. try to get people to understand that, especially when you're young, yeah. you could you could you could be up today, but you could be down tomorrow. But you can't look at yourself as like you some kind of failure just because you're down. That's yeah. all. That's all part of it, you know what I'm saying. Right. So I want to I want to uh, still touch on like. Like get getting getting that bread because I, I I like something that you said because um instead of you just feeling like I just hit a lick like you said it took, it took you three years to get to that point so that was three years worth of work for real mm -hmm. so I could that that make a lot of sense I hope that ain't going over people here for it was like you just lucked up on a deal that took you three years of research yeah. getting out here you know networking yeah. politics with people then yeah. you hit boom the jackpot but yeah. talk about talk about um how, well I want to ask you this how. You got the you got the one fifty. Yeah. How long was it until it was gone? That's a great question, right? <laughs> so I uh, got it was one fifty seven. Um, I had to like put some money in my pocket, right? Spread mm -hmm. love, my brothers, everybody get, get ten thousand. Just hitting, you know, hitting people off, yeah. grandmoms. Yeah, I'm taking care of a few people. Um, so I had about a hundred thousand at that point, right? Fifty thousand went to I don't even know where fifty thousand went. Gone straight just, off the top. Yeah, that's just like the tax, the black mm, tax. You right. get a bit of money, you got everybody got to eat, right? That's a fact. So now I got a hundred k. I used that to go buy a two family property. I went and bought it off the auction. I went to auction.com. When I bought that property, I used hard money. So some of it, um, my down payment money, I put towards the property, right? But where I went wrong is that. I was um, overpaying contractors because I didn't understand like the construction part, right? Uh, I was trusting people to better have better judgment, all of that cool stuff, and that's where like things like didn't go right. But it was a learning experience for me to get to this point. So I, I like to share that because yeah, I made one hundred and fifty-seven thousand, but I lost it fast. And then this is what happened: the next year, it's time to file taxes. Yep. Now I get hit with the bill, 35000 mm -hmm. And the money gone now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm saying the money gone. Like, damn, mm -hmm. you owe 35000 And um, my back was against the wall, but it, it really put me in a position. So I'm like, I, I know what I got to do. I did it already. Like, I know this works. I found a deal, flipped it, found an investor. I know that this process works. Now it's about doubling down on that same mm -hmm. process. That's so important, bro. Like, I literally, um, the day before yesterday, I just got a tax yeah. bill. And when I got it, I was like, damn. But it's luckily... I'm prepared. I'm already been prepping for this situation <laughs> instead of just like getting money. Yeah. Like a lot of times, as you a young entrepreneur, you don't know nobody. You getting money, you just living, living. You ain't even thinking. Not. You know, you got to pay tax on this, bro. And it's not like a nine to five where you get paid and the taxes just come out of your check. Nah. When you entrepreneur, you got to pay. You got to make sure you pay this on your own. Yeah. And a lot of times, oftentimes, especially for new entrepreneurs, that just completely is just out of the people's minds for real. Then yeah. they get with that that. The IRS sent them that uh that letter, letter in the mail. That letter in the mail, you like, oh shit, I gotta pay what? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um, talk about like you said, you got it, you lost it, then you got it back. So talk about that process of getting it back. Facts, facts, facts. So 
in that process, I learned how to go and um, build my credit, right? I had an investor who now believed in me because we actually did a deal. We made six figures from A to Z. So now I got that relationship. That's why I always promote having strong relationships, right? So I got a relationship with a lender now. I got relationship with the banks. So I started building my business credit. That's how I got back in the game. So my first business credit card was Chase, the Chase Inc. Mm -hmm. Got 25000 Next business credit card was Fulton Bank, 20000 That's how I started to build up my capital again. And then I went mm -hmm. back at it. You know, bought another property, a four family, fixed it up, refinanced, pulled the cash out, continued to buy more properties, right? So I just started speeding at that point, right? I was just getting deals because it worked at that point. I already knew. But um, I got to 40 units, right? Dang. How long, how long did it take? So uh, well, that was 2017, 2023 years. So three years. years. So it took me three years to get my first deal. And then three years after that, I got to 40 units. Mm. So everything just started to click fast, for me. Fast, yeah. But then everything crashed, too, because... Well, I ain't going to say crash. It's, it's when a light bulb went off because now I got 40 units and most people don't tell you about this when it comes to real estate where you're getting phone calls at midnight talking about you know, the tenants toilet, upstairs is, is loud or the toilet is clogged, the sink is leaking, and you got to go and fix this pipe, spending a bunch of money. So I'm looking at my profit margin like, damn, I'm making seven, eight grand a month, but then I'm spending X amount of dollars to fix the property up. But it's not making as much sense. Mm -hmm. And then COVID happened. And mm. I had eight tenants that wasn't paying. So now I'm still paying water. I'm paying the mortgage. I'm paying taxes. And I'm not getting rent. So I started selling off some of my properties so I could liquidate and not be too debt heavy. Debt heavy. I got to have some cash on hand. So this one tenant, um, I wanted to sell that property that he was in. He wasn't leaving. So I offered him cash for keys. So I gave him $2,000. I said, yo, if you leave, he go 2000 Whatever you owe me from back rent, don't even worry about it. He said put my items in a storage unit for 90 days, and then I'll leave. So I went in my area. We didn't find no storage units that was available. Literally, everything was like sold out. And that's what I'm thinking. Like, yo, but I need to get in this business. I need to, I need to find out what's going on in the storage facilities. Started YouTubing. I'm doing a bunch of research. And then I paid for a mastermind. I paid $25,000. I went out to Arizona for a mastermind and learned the full game on self-storage. Bought my first self-storage facility. And now I don't got to chase tenants for money, right? I don't got to fix bathrooms. I don't got to do toilets. I don't got to do kitchens. I don't do none of that. And I make the same type of money and more, really. You know what I mean? I still get the benefits, depreciation, equity. Everything you think about when it comes to real estate, we still get it. So I'm starting to, like, kind of get away from the residential and just double down on the commercial. Commercial. Mm, break, that, break that down some more, like, how that even, um, like, how you even get a, 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 a storage, storage, facility. Yeah, storage, storage facility. facility. So this is the thing, right? Most people, we walk around, like, even I mean, in Texas, bro, you see the storage facilities everywhere they're building them because wherever you see an apartment building, most likely you're going to see a self-storage facility because a lot of people that's in these apartment buildings, they're making them smaller and smaller, and we all like items. Like, we emotional creatures. We like our items, and we use the storage unit. So somebody that's an average Joe, you can go and apply for the SBA loan. It's, the, it's called the SBA 7A loan. And it's specifically designed for newbie investors. It's like FHA for residential. So if you buy a, a single family house, you get three and a half percent down FHA. Uh, SBA is similar to that, but it's for self storage. So all you got to do is come to the table with 10%. So let's say you go and buy a $750,000 storage facility. All you got to do is come to the table with 75000 But what I teach everybody is that 75000 you can raise from private investors, right? You might have family and friends who got money in a 401k and it's sitting. And they probably make it 4 or 5%, but you could guarantee them 10 12%. So they might invest with you. Or you go and get business credit cards like I did. 0% business credit cards and then raise that money. That's your down payment. And literally, that's how you get in the game. 650 credit score. Um, that's it. And as long as you got some W-2s or tax returns, show some documented cash flow. And it's pretty. It's a simple process. It's not as hard as what people think. Like you said, you don't got that, that, that tenant problem of people calling you at all kinds of hours and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> nah. So you probably, so you actually prefer that than actually the real estate, residential real estate. Yeah, I'm commercial all day now. Like, really? res, like I'm selling off a lot of my residential properties. I'm keeping my smaller apartments, like my 10 units, my 8 units. I keep those, but single families, I'm letting them go. Two families, I'm letting them go. Letting go. It's not, because it's not, not enough profit it. margin, and I'm dealing with headaches. Mm. How many, unit, how many uh, residential units you got now? Under 30, like 27, 28, something oh, like that. How many commercial units you got? Uh, over 300. 
You got over three hundred commercial units. Yeah, like so oh, it's yeah. a storage unit. So all oh, right, right. Yeah, so, store, yeah. so it go by. So we got a hundred and I picked up a hundred and nine unit facility that's in Arkansas. Um, Eighty eight. Oh, this unit not facility. even. You are not even near these. Where these? Oh nah. It's, you just I could buy whatever because right. we don't have people living there. We put the certain processes in place, and when people we rent out the storage units, they don't come back for months, years. Right. You just put your items in there, auto pay. You out. Got you probably the, never even went to see it, have you? Oh yeah. Oh, you I go probably like once a quarter. Okay. Once every couple months to check in, uh, that's about it. I don't really need to be there. Mm, right. You, yeah, you, you going, uh, you going crazy, bro, on the, from the commercial side and yeah. a, and a residential residential side. You said what you only thirty, right? Yeah. So let me ask you this: What is your um, since starting all this, doing all, being in business for years, what is your biggest regret? It's a good question. That's a really good question. I would say my biggest regret would be trying to invest in other people, really trying to get everybody else to buy into my vision. That's what I started out earlier. I would, my, in my brother's basement, right? I, I had a meeting. One time I invited all my friends and I had invited like 30 people. Only nine people showed up, bro. I had a PowerPoint presentation. Like, Yo, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go buy this real estate. This is how it works. These are the numbers, the calculations. We got to raise this amount of money. And only nine people showed up and only one person actually locked in with me. He got a million dollar portfolio right now. Word. Crazy, right? My best friend. So um, I spent a lot of time just trying to convince other people about something. I had to really understand if I would have spent more time on me, I'd probably be way further versus trying to hand out money and teach people wasting time. I think that would probably be my, my biggest regret. Just focus on getting my stuff in order first. Mm, that's, that's interesting because that's a yeah. common um, theme when I ask people a similar question they say that but i think a lot of times it takes experience for you to realize that because as you come up people put on that um that cape and they feel yeah. like it's their responsibility to save everybody and not only that they feel like they can actually do it yeah. and then and at the end of the day just being <laughs> real just because you got the vision or you got the you got the vision you got the knowledge don't mean everybody else see it yeah. and they don't mean they got to either for real because yeah. some shit just based on time and people gonna see stuff their eyes gonna open whenever they are ready yeah. Some people just never see it. It ain't meant for them, too. So yeah. you can't really um, force your vision and shit on things. But it takes time to learn that, though, for real. You got you to go through the... You got to damn near go broke and see that nobody else around you can help you get back up. Yeah. You up, you know, helping everybody. And that's what happened. Like, when I hit that brick wall and I lost all the money. Not lost it, but I invested it incorrectly. And I'm looking around. I got to build it back up on my own. And at that point, it's like, I know, I know what I, I, I got to do going what you forward. Go, yep. And what, uh, on the other side of that, what is your, um, I would say, is the, the, uh, what's the, what's, what, what, how can I ask this? What's the opposite of biggest regret? Oh, my, oh, you know, the opposite uh, of biggest regret. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, like, you know like what I'm the best decision. The I best decision. Like yeah, the best the decision, yeah, the best decision the, you made. The best decision I ever made, I feel like, was to bet on myself and invest in mentorship. Right? Where I, without mentorship, I wouldn't be where I am today. I have mm. to, it's really learning from somebody else all the mistakes and you get to shortcut the process. So like, that's the biggest thing I could do. The, the best thing, the best decision I made, I, I would say that betting on myself and mentorship. Mentorship, hey, mentorship is, is air. You gotta, people be scared to spend some bread to get to, get to where they wanna get to, man. They be like, man, I'm gonna I'm figure it out on myself. Not knowing you finna have so many headaches and mistakes that this other person already went through. If you just chip them, chip them that, whatever that fee is, you could go around all that and get there even quicker yeah. than what they got there. Facts. Like that, you ain't, yeah. hey, you ain't, uh, that's game, bro. It's going to, it's going to cost you either way. Like it's going to cost you because you want to make mistakes, lose it, or you want to just pay somebody. Either way, it's going to cost you. I'd rather pay somebody and then not make those mistakes and get to the goal fast, like you said. Bro, that's the realest shit in the world. Like you know, we we all you always hear people these days. Like I even use the term sometimes. I, people say free game, free game, and I try to get really want people to understand that. If the information is valuable, there's really no such thing as free game because it's you gonna get the game even if you get the game for free, mm. it's gonna cost you on the back end. It's gonna cost you your time. It's gonna cost you your energy. Mm. It's gonna cost you your resources. It's gonna cost. It's gonna take. A, it's gonna require a lot out of you right. once you get this information. If you really want to win with this information, mm. so I feel like a lot of people you just can't have the approach of let me get this information for free. Why this person can't give me this information for free? Cause shit, like I said, even if they give it to you for free, it's gonna cost you so much if you really applying it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's really, in my opinion, it's really no such thing as free game if the game is really valuable. 
Because, when, like, you could tell somebody all the shit about real estate, break it down from A to Z, yeah. like, step by step. And if they really say, all right, I'm going to do this, I'm going to live this life, let's be real. How much? How many hours is it going to cost them? How much energy is it going to cost them? <laughs> a lot. You know what I'm saying? A lot. So, it's going it, to, the game costs regardless, yeah. for real, to, to, to some degree. So, I try to get, um, I'll be, I'll be trying to really get people to um, understand it. But I want to talk about, like, because you're only 30, man. You, you're young, and you yeah. experienced a lot yeah. within business. You had wins, losses, wins again, all that. So, what's the, um, especially as a, as a, you got you got kids? Yeah. How many you got? One. You got one kid. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, being a, I'm pretty sure you're a family man. You take care of your business. Yeah. What's the, uh, how do you maintain that balance between taking care of your people but still going hard in business. Cause I know that's a hard thing for many people. Bro, that's one of the hardest things like to do right now, right? But what I try to do is like make sure that I incorporate my family in everything I do. So like traveling up, I'm going out for a conference, or I'm going out to a event, I'm going out, I'm gonna bring my son, I'm gonna bring my wife, I'm gonna bring everybody with me, and we're gonna get that experience together. So you we're not missing a beat. I don't wanna be away for three, four days, right? I'd rather you be with me. So right. It, my my grind is like Go harder, make more money so I can afford to bring everybody with me so that we don't miss no time. We don't miss no memories because time is our most valuable asset outside of our minds. So mm, that's yeah, just really you, what it you, is. You, you gave us some game, bro. And uh, yeah. uh, how, as far as, I don't know if you, you're in a relationship? Yeah. Okay, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't <laughs> know if you was, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I, like I like to talk to women and men about this because we in the area, you know, it's, it's social media, so many distractions out here. Yeah, so yeah. I was gonna ask you, what else? How do you stay focused and avoid those distractions too? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because once, you, let's be honest, once you're winning, it's a different level of access. Yeah. You go outside, people know you. Oh, man, yeah. hey, blah blah blah, they in your DM, all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's different compared to when you ain't really got no following on on the gram, nothing like that. When you lit on the gram, yeah. it, it's just gonna come with a different kind of, you know what I'm saying, a different kind of issue. So how do you handle that? That's a good question. Um, it, it's really I look at it as like, it's about being disciplined. It's like mm, life or right. death. It, it's really life or death. A lot of times we be thinking that we got a bunch of like chances in life. You know what I'm saying? We like I the way I look at it, like my 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 right hand man just came home from doing six years, right? Like I'm seeing people losing their jobs, I'm seeing people dying, right? Over like small decisions that they make that they could have been like, damn, it wasn't that, it wasn't worth it, right? So I didn't just I didn't been through shit. Um, I could curse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, bro, <laughs> bro, bro, bro. So look, I done been through shit where I'm I'm at the point where I'm more mature and aware of my actions. Where I'm like, yo, this this not worth it right now. Like we not like spend that time and energy doing this, but it is out there. I'm not gonna yeah. I'm not gonna front. It's hard. It's hard as hell. And then also surrounding yourself with the right people. Like, yeah. Like if I'm out with the bros, like they know, all right, bro, come on, what we doing, let's go. You know right. what I'm saying? Like you gotta have your homie that's gonna hold you accountable. You might be that's getting too crap. Oh, I'm, I'm having a few more drinks and I'm talking reckless right now. Yo, bro, let's go, bro. You know you're not supposed to be doing that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. No, so just having the right people around you and also like being being as disciplined as possible. Mm, that, that that's bars, man. And I wanna um I wanna talk about uh social media real quick because I. I see you've been blowing up online. You've been putting that work in, nice. putting that content out, going crazy, man. Yeah. First, I want to say salute to you on that because that's, that. as many people know, because many people trying to do it, it ain't easy. So to do it, break the, uh, break the code and get through that and going crazy, salute to you. But I want to talk uh, for the person that's listening that might want to emulate that. Yeah. You're like, man, I want to go crazy online, have a following online. What is the the the, the key things you yeah. could give tips to people tips to right now on how they could do the same thing? Yeah, <laughs> yo, honestly, it ain't no formula, bro. Like, it's really consistency and mm. then being genuine, being being real. Yeah. When I'm like, a lot of people there hit me up and be like, "Yo, you mad passionate in your videos? Like, you animated in your videos? That's me. That's like, you. That's how I talk all day. When I'm in a, and I'm talking with the bros, I'm passionate. I'm loud. I'm getting crazy because I'm really intense about like what I do. So when I'm online, I just let that speak for it. I be vulnerable. I be real. I document the process. A lot of people want to pick and choose what they put out, right? Like I put out a video the other day and I was talking about how I had a conversation with my wife, girlfriend at the time, right? Where I was back in college. I was selling drugs. I was rapping. I was playing ball. None of that, like all fell for me. I ain't making it to them. I got cut. <laughs> like, like almost got kicked out of school, got arrested, right? All this stuff. So then I was like, damn. I don't got no gifts. Like, I really felt that way because growing up in the hood, we think that 
a gift is being a, a best rapper or being a ball player or being a musician, right? Mm-hmm. So I didn't have any of those skills. And I'm like, damn, God ain't blessed me with no gifts. Like, why, why not me? And she told me like, yo, you focused on the wrong things. You focused on tangible skills. You focused mm-hmm. on physical. Like the skills you have is intangible. It's inside of you. You a leader. You ambitious. I seen you overcome the worst. Like your mom died when you was 12. Your grandmother died when you was 14. I still seen you come every single day with a smile on your face. Like you got impact. Like you know how to be sociable. You know how to speak. Like all of these things. I'm like, shit. Like you right. Make it sense. Yeah. Like you, you right. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So... Um, at, at that point, I started to be more aware of, of my skills and my gifts and then just sharing it with the world. So for anybody that's starting out and they want to build their brand, realize your gifts. So I would tell anybody like right now, if you're listening to this, I would draft up a message in your phone, send out a text message to the last 10, 15 people and say, yo, um, hey, cuz, hey, hey, auntie, hey, bro, what do you feel is my biggest like talent or gift? Like if I was to start a business, what would it be? Like ask people because you never know. What people what perceive you. of you. Exactly. You may think is like what you do right now, podcasting, people looking like, yo, that's hard as shit. It's easy for you though. Right. Right. So sometimes you want to ask people around you, they might tell you, oh, I think you are good at this. I think you're good at that. And now you could take that and go online and just create and be vulnerable, be general, and be gen- um, genuine and be consistent. And then the last piece is investing in yourself. Like I had to invest over a hundred thousand dollars. When I said I was going to like rebrand and really get out there, I paid a Excuse me. I paid hundred thousand dollars to get a retainer, shoot my videos, consistency, everything that I got to do to get out there and just like run ads, just go heavy. Just go heavy, and then you will see the return. You can't half-ass this shit. Like you, you, you gotta, really committed to. You got to be all in. Mm, and that, that, that's a gem about um, yeah. asking other people how you see you because we all the times we don't. A lot of times you don't see the you don't see the greatness in yourself, especially if you come from an environment where people not reminding you of it. You know what I'm saying? When you come up in a, in a certain household, certain environment, people are going to tell you, like, hey, you got greatness in you. You're going to do great things. But a, a lot of times, the communities we come from, mm-hmm. ain't nobody telling you that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So you really be like, you really might start questioning yourself at some point. Like, damn. So it's dope. to It is dope to ask other people, though, like, how do you see me? Because you, yeah. you might not see yourself the way other people see you. That's just the reality of it. So that's... That's uh that's heavy game, bro. So I want to ask you this though. So for the for the person that's listening to this that want to get into real estate, let's say they start from ground zero. Let's say they got their credit probably ain't really hitting like that. They probably ain't got that much capital to start, but they they want to get they want to get started whether it's residential or commercial. What's your best piece of actionable advice for them right now that they could take and, gotcha. and get the ball rolling? All right, so I'm I'm a, I'm gonna give a full blueprint. A let's full do it. Game. I'm gonna tell so like literally. You sitting at home, you you stuck, and you trying to figure out how to get into the commercial real estate game. You trying to figure out how to make additional money. This is just step by step blueprint, right? Um, number one, you want to get the information. So I would say save up your last dollars and pay for a course, pay for mentorship, whatever you got to do. The information is like non negotiable. You need that. If you can't pay, just YouTube, Google. Like this is the easiest time. I wouldn't say easy, but this is the most accessible time that we have to like wealth and information, bro. Facts. We can literally go on YouTube and type it in. It's going to pop up. Right? So go and get the information. Facts. Immerse yourself into it. Learn the skill. Once you learn the skill, then I would say have a meeting. So every single year I have what I call a family legacy meeting. Right? So I bring all my cousins, brothers, aunts, sisters. Like I bring them all in a room and I teach everybody credit, real estate. I make sure everybody pull up their credit profile. All right, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. All right, we're going to get everybody at LLC. And then we do a family susu where, all right, everybody put up $200 each week. This week, we're going to take the pot and we're going to fix auntie credit. Next week, we're going to take the pot. We're going to fix cuzzo credit, right? So now we we working the money around. All right, cuzzo, we just fixed your credit this this, this time. We're going to take you, put you on my LLC. So Because I already got the LLC. I'm going to put you on the LLC. Let's go get funded. So if you do that, you go get $50,000 to $100,000 in business credit. Now you could take that money and then go invest because you have the information, right? And you got partners. I would go buy a self-storage facility. All you got to do is put 10% down. You go, I just got sent the deal this morning, $600,000 for a 74-unit facility in Georgia, right? Mm. So $600,000, 10% down is $60,000. Right. So you could easily get $60,000 if you had that meeting with your family and you went out and applied for three business credit cards and got... $20,000 each, and now you pull that money off. You put that down payment. You get into the facility. Now you got to pay back the debt. I get it because a lot of people get scared with the debt. Well, this is how 
I, this is the reason why I love commercial real estate and self storage facilities specifically because you have multiple streams of income out of that facility, right? So when you buy that facility, one of the streams that you can have is a moving company. Because now when people rent out the units, they need to move it inside. Nobody want to break their back. So you can now hire your family to go do the move. You don't need certifications for that. Now you got a moving company. That's additional income. You put a few vending machines on your facility because as people are moving in and out, they get hot, they want to get a drink, and they're going to move off an impulse. If they see the vending machine on the corner of the hall, they just going to go buy a drink just because they've seen it. Right now they're thirsty already, so they're going to grab a vending machine. You start bringing money in on a vending machine. Um, you could actually you know, do a transportation business where you partner with U-Haul, and now you got transportation. So there's many ways that you could double down on your facility. Like Even like right now, uh, one, of the, one of the facilities, right, the unit, we, we rent it out as a content studio. So you see how you got this studio right here? Like mm -hmm. the storage unit is big enough like this, probably a little, like, like a little smaller, but it still got space. So instead of you paying two grand, whatever That's you pay, on. go to a unit and you can pay cheaper. And now you got a content studio. You can shoot your podcast, you That's can do your video. Right like it's so many things you could do with it. But one acquisition, like one move, you out of here. Like you done built a million dollar business, took your family out the hood. Mm, so that's why I would give anybody starting out. You follow that path. It's not easy. Right. It's just, it's just simple if you if you follow it, stick to it. And that's important for people to understand because sometimes people they get some game and they be like, man, this they expect it to be easy. Oh, nah. Like just because somebody could break it down simple, don't mean you actually getting out here taking those steps. It's gonna be Friday you get the information. Tuesday you up now deal yeah. complete. Like it don't work like that. You nah. gonna have to put the energy into it. But nah. that's. That's some, hey, that's some, uh, that's some game right there. You just, yeah. I, I, I hope that's not going over people here. I, I hope they're really paying attention to what you're saying, bro, for get real. Get that pen and pad. Man, get the, man, what? Get that pen and pad. So I want to, regarding, regarding the real estate, what was your, uh, you feel like was your best deal that you did? My best, my best deal is my first deal. The first deal. one. It's like, when you a friend, like, all right, let's use, um, who can I use? You know how people have their first album? Yep. And you come out and you're an artist, you have your first yeah, album. Yeah, I was like that first album. First album be lit. It's hard to match that. Yeah. Sophomore album, you're like, ah. Oh. Uh, Third Richard album. Richard I Tryin. Yeah, it's like, good Richard I Tryin, right? Went crazy. The massive <laughs> the cut. Still did good. It still but, did good. But, yeah. So that's really, that's that's my story. Like, I still, now I do it consistently. So I do a $30,000, $100,000 deal, 80000 We do that consistently. I haven't had a $157,000 deal Yet again after that, but I'll take the consistent checks. Yeah, them, what? <laughs> Come on now, that's that's, yeah. that's the consistent checks. A check is a check. It don't matter. Thanks. Nah, for real. But what's um uh? Cause do you do do you do anything else other than like real estate? So I have a coaching company. So, okay. So you know I got a community mailbox yeah. me in the academy. So I teach. What's the name of it? Say it again. Mailbox me in the academy. Okay. Okay. So okay. I teach real estate investors how to go out there buy apartment buildings. Self storage facilities with no money down, no money out of their pocket, get them business funding and all of that cool stuff. I got a staffing company as well. Oh, um, got a media production company as okay. well. So I'm producing a TV series and stuff like that. But this is what I teach people, right? Because a lot of times you think you got to be the face of everything. So my whole goal is build out the income. I know the strategies. All right, bro, I know you got a, you got a clothing line and you need some capital to boost your clothing line, I will give me 30% equity in a business, I'll be an investor, and I'll get my marketing team to come in and help you strategize and blow it up. Now, I'm, I got equity in a clothing company, cool, right? Staffing company, you know what You know what operations you got to build out. I got a brand, a lot of people need VAs and all of this stuff, I'm going to bring them to you, give me 30% of the company. So now, I don't need to physically be doing the day-to-day, -day, oh, day -day. but I leverage my resources, which is my, my strategy, my information, to be able to have equity in a bunch of businesses. I think if more uh, people took that approach, they would see the results that they want. Because I feel like people, their, their immediate circle can help them more than the people realize. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes people try to focus on this person I've seen on the gram, this person in this 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 uh, higher place than me as far as like financially that they might not have access to. It's like, I need to get this person to, to connect so I get to the next level. When the truth is the people that's around you, a lot of the times, maybe not all the time, a lot of the times, the, even though they might not be financially lit how you want them to, they might have some kind of, whether it's skill set, time, anything that could help you level up to where you kind of get to it. But a lot, a lot of times you might have to give up some equity though. That's all I like to said. But you know, 
a lot of times people want 100% yeah. uh, nothing. <laughs> a nothing, right? They want, <laughs> Yo, bro, people it's, want 100% it's, of nothing. It's really mindset. It's mindset. Mm-hmm. We in, in, in our community, bro, we think we don't need mindset. That's because, again, we can't see it, right? So if you gain weight, you know you need to go to the gym because you can see it, right? But if you have like mindset troubles, you don't really see you it, so you don't ever think you need it, right? Like, and that's the problem. So when we start to think bigger, if you look at like Jay Z, he talked about how he gave up uh, ownership in Ace of Spades, Ace of right? Spades, yep. You gotta have partnerships to grow. Like that's how it go. You gotta be able to think bigger. And just to add to what you said, I always say we always want to network up, right? Sometimes you gotta network across. Facts. It be the people right next to you that you can look to your that right you to your to. left, and they in the ground with you and gonna build it up, like. We don't got to always be trying to jump on somebody else's wave. Look around, build your own wave. Build your own wave. With the people that's around you, that's across from you. And that's really how you will win faster and better. No, facts. I like something that I, my, my boy Dave from BWR, I think I think this, yeah, he said, he said, I'd rather have, um, he said, I'd rather have, I think he said 20% of a, uh, of a watermelon than 100% of a grape. Oh, I like that. I, said, I like that. I like I that. I said, I said, oh, that's a that's a bar. And I and I remember um I had Brett Barrett on. He's the he's the guy that created Ace of Spades. He's mm-hmm. the guy that create uh Bel Air and all that. You know, he sold Ace of Spades to uh Ho. And right. I act, yeah, I asked okay, him. Okay, okay. I said, what made you make that decision? Because you know when we when we create our own businesses, that's our baby. And a lot of times it's hard to like let it go and go. give it up. So mm-hmm. I'm like, what made you come to that decision that you could sell this to him? And he was like where it really, he was like, it was like cutting off my arm, but it made me more powerful because now I had the finances to do even more things and even finance even more of my dreams. So it was like, it was hard for me to let it go, but it made me more stronger. That's deep. And I feel like this, that's deep, bro. That's and I'm deep. like, if, if, if people really understood that and stopped just trying to hold on to everything they got, they could be more powerful. Their yeah. brands and business can expand more, even though they might have to give up something. But you're going to be stronger in the end. Stronger. Yeah. So when he so, told me that, I was like, damn. I want to ask you a question. Though. I, know, so, I know you're doing an interview, but because I, I like to like build, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like for you, how, at what point did you get to the point where you understood that bigger picture of partnerships and equity and not thinking that I got to do everything on my own, like even in your own business? Like what was that turning point for you? I don't need to be honest, bro. It's something. Um, I think I, I, I think I always had a level of understanding of it. It's just that the thing had to make sense to me okay. for me to actually do it. But I always kind of knew like it's only so far you gonna go alone. Mm-hmm. Like it's only so far you could you could build something up to at a certain level. And I got big goals. I got big dreams. I know I'm gonna need the right people to to hit these next levels and stuff like that. So I always knew like to do this, I'm gonna have to let go. At the end of the day, it's gonna come down to business. You're gonna have to let go of some of the equity. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm and I ain't never shied away from that. Even though I ain't done it yet. I ain't gave them no equity yet. And I had I didn't had offers. Like yeah. I remember when I first when we first started the show, this was in uh twenty we started the show in 2018, 2019. We had somebody reach out to us and this this was like six months in the show. Okay. Like he was like, I'll give you he said, I'll give you twenty five thousand for some equity. And I'm like, Dude came out of nowhere. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Mind you, this is the beginning. Like, we ain't lit yet. We ain't nothing. I'm like, we ain't a uh, video. And I'm like, dang. I um I remember something that uh I think Master P said. He said, uh, um, he said, I think he said the first deal, like mm-hmm. this person gonna give me this. I know I'm worth way more than what they offering me. Right. So in that moment, I'm like, this is dope. This is that was proof of concept yeah. what we doing was working, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. I'm like, if somebody gonna give me twenty five thousand, even though there ain't no money, the fact that he willing to get this to us and we ain't even really did nothing yet, yeah. just imagine when we do something, what yeah. what that double back gonna be around. Yeah, that shows that you really you working. Yeah. Like the formula is yeah, there. That's a formula is there. Keep, just, just keep, keep running going. it up. Yeah, because it was this one, this wasn't like no big media company or big corporation. This was some small level stuff. And he like, I'll give you this. If for equity. I'm like, what? I'm like, hold on. We, we really finna get in our bag now because we could get M's out of this. Yeah. And we just started and somebody offering bread. That's so, dope. Yeah. I, I like to ask that question because like to be 100%, once you get to a certain level in life, it's certain conversations that you can't have with certain people around you because then they look at you like you bragging. Like if I say, Yo, I'm, yeah, I'm about to go cop new Benz. Like mm. I could talk to you about that because right. you, you got a Benz. Like, mm-hmm. But you go to, to the homies on the block and you like, like, oh, you think you? It's like, bro, we we talking high level game right now. We talking some. So I like to ask yeah. other high level entrepreneurs like, how do you converse? How do you deal? Like, at what points did you start to really click and move yeah. differently? 
coming from your circumstances. What's crazy is I feel like this year is really like just being transparent. The year I learned the most with within business, and especially as far as um, I under I put it like this: I understand why um wealthy people specifically like from the white community, I understand why they don't flash their money. Because it comes with a lot of, um, it comes with a lot of people with the evil eye, as, mm. as, as people say. Yeah. And, and us in the black community, specifically, we feel like we start getting money. It, even if we don't necessarily, it's the joy of having yeah. it, coming from nothing to having yeah. it, but we feel like we got to show everybody. And, and to be honest, a lot of it is is based on insecurity. Yeah. It's like, they might you might not feel like nobody, yeah. so you feel like, I got to show you all this so you could see me a certain way and so I could feel a certain way. Mm. But this year, I really realized that once you flaunt your money, you attract the wrong kind of people. You attract mm -hmm. the wrong crowd. You attract leeches. You, want, you attract people that want something from you. You attract, you attract people that's jealous of you. Because just to be real, we know at the end of the day, most people in the country, in the world, is struggling. Yeah. So every day, if they seeing you post a win, post a win, yeah, yeah. you flexing, you on yeah. a vacation, you on the beach, you yeah. on a... Oh, you you just lit. Yeah. I love to see it. Yeah. I'm always love to see it. But I know <laughs> at the end of the day, most people they gonna have the evil eye. Yeah. And I realize a lot of the times, especially when you're on social media and you're a public figure, we share so many personal things, whether it be our significant others. If you got kids, and I'll be like to protect them. Some things yeah. I just stay away from completely now. Like I don't even talk about. Like I remember when we when, when I first used to uh, brand myself, I used to talk about. How much money I made. If I made X, Y in a week, X, mm -hmm. Y in a month, I probably talked about that probably like a year and a half. I never really just talk about how much money I make because I don't want, I try to keep all that private now. Because mm -hmm. it's like, you don't want so many people in your business that's envious of you, watching you, and doing things like that because it, it, that's, that shit come with it. And it, I just seen so many, man, we could talk offline about it, but I just seen so many different things. I'm like, it was just learning experiences for me, seeing other people go through shit, gotcha. if that makes sense. And I'm like, mm, let me stay away from it. And another thing I realized, somebody else put me on game too. There's a community on TikTok that reports social influences to the IRS. So when you see people on TikTok talking about, hey, I made three million last year. It's a community on TikTok oh. that reports people to the IRS to say, is they paying taxes on this money that they claim they made? So this, that is another reason why I'm like, I'm out that game. Yeah. Like, hey, if other people want to do it, go ahead and do it. Me personally, I'm good. I'm going to just live my life, be cool, handle my business. But I, but I, that's why I say I understand why a lot of people from different communities, they don't flaunt it because it brings a whole different kind of energy that you could have completely avoided. Yeah. So I, I got one more question for you, right? <laughs> but how did, how did that impact? Your your business by like switching lanes and not talking. Yeah. I made twenty thousand last week. Yeah. I mean, like, did that change the impact that you have or how people yeah. perceive you or how many people invest in your programs or whatever? Yo, that's a that's a great question yeah. because the truth is, specifically in our community, you are going to get more eyes when you go that route. Exactly, it's gonna be an easy, <laughs> it's gonna be an easier, quicker route when you talking about, when you when you flashy because yeah. you, people want the lifestyle. Yeah. They like, yeah. well, I want to let me let me. So for me personally, since um, I kind of did that in the beginning, I already had like an audience to so a point. So it was easier for me to just kind of slowly transition okay. over to not doing that. So it wasn't, it is an effect. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to cap it. Is. You can see the difference. <laughs> okay, okay. But I was okay with it because I'm like, I'm already in a good place. Okay. So I'm okay with it. If I could get like those bad eyes away from me and just be in this good position, I'm okay with it. That's yeah. how I saw it. All right, no, that's dope. Because to be real with you, I'm going through that phase now. I know. Because right? that, that's part of how I built my brand over the last year, like mm -hmm. skyrocketing. Is by me showing the numbers, showing, showing the receipts. Like, because a lot of people saying what they do, they not. So, like, most huh, people capping. I really want to show y'all, yeah. right? But then then it come the other side, like you said. And my mentor, mm -hmm. he sat me down one day. He was like, "I'm gonna be real with you. Like, like real wealth is quiet, bro. It is. Like, real wealth is a secret. You don't want to be sitting around pulling up to your apartment building in a Benz and they, but your tenants looking at you. Crazy. And like. they paying you money. You got the Benz, like, bro. You don't do that. Cause that's mm -hmm. what I was doing. I'm pulling up to pick up money or take care of issues and it's like real wealth is quiet you don't yes. gotta always tell people that you the owner of the building pull up no. and be the property manager pull up and just be yo you the water boy just stick, like act like you not that guy and then the one who actually just watches more and listens more know the most you don't gotta be the one that talk the most so that i'm, I'm in that process of getting to that point of mm -hmm. saying all right let me not keep showing or Feeling like I gotta prove something yeah. because in our community, if you're not showing it, they don't if you're not wearing it, 
You ain't doing it. You ain't doing it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you ain't doing it. But yeah. another thing I did realize, though, is at the end of the day, once you win it, it's going to show. Even if you're not flying, like we all know people. I got I got friends of mine that on online that I know they got bread. I know they win it because mm-hmm. they, they, they'll tell me they win it. But I see it. Even if they not driving a super flashy car, dressed in super flashy clothes, it's certain lifestyles you can't fake. Yeah, yeah. You can't fake. Being on a vacation all the time. You that's can't true. fake having a dope-ass career. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Certain shit, you just like, that ain't cap. You can't fake that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right, Once you right. see it, you know it. So it's like, at that point, I don't have to I don't have to um, show y'all I'm winning no more. Yeah. Y'all just know it when y'all <laughs> see me. Gotcha. And this is, not only that, it's a certain, once you, we know it. It's a certain feel. It's a certain aura. Yeah. It's a certain career. When somebody winning, you could just like you feel it. They ain't even. They, they come happy. With a, they cool it. Like. You come in with a white tee, some jeans on, yeah. some sneakers. You can know like yeah. he doing his thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like an aura that you could just so you could yeah. just feel. Once I once I learned that, I'm like I ain't gotta do. I don't gotta do certain shit for the for the internet no more. Yeah. Just just because of that, and to protect, like I said, to protect certain things. I don't yeah. want. Yeah. Crazy shit like that happened. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, 100% so. right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 uh, that, that, I ain't even planning on having this conversation. I'm glad. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure that's going, that's going, um, uh, probably help, help, help a couple people. I'm yeah. sure. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be some. At the, at the end of the day, when you're trying to build the brand, especially from scratch, I get it. Sometimes yeah. you're gonna have, you're gonna have to every now and then show mm-hmm. a little, you know, what I'm saying flex on people, and ain't nothing wrong with that. But when Doing it all the time, twenty four seven. I feel like, especially being black, coming from areas that yeah. we come from, yeah. it's a lot of it's a lot of risks that come with that shit. Right. Look at dude, dude, dude from uh, where you from? Uh, <laughs> the pastor that was flexing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They got him. They got him. Yeah, I ain't even. I'm not even laughing that they got him. I'm just. Yeah. I'm just laughing that that's that's yeah, that's kind of similar to what we talking about. Yeah. So when when people see shit like that, they be. It, right. Yeah, yeah, right. they they be right. <laughs> they be on you. But let's talk about um, because we already we already discussed uh what uh people can do like people that's trying to similarly to come up. Let's say, cause I know like when you was breaking that down, there are gonna be people that are gonna say be like, man, what if I don't got the charisma like Romel got? Mm-hmm. Like, what if you know what I'm saying? He got the charisma. He know how to speak. Yeah. Some people just ain't got that gift. They yeah. ain't blessed with that gift yeah. for the so for that person, or they could just be introverted. They might not be extroverts like that. So for that person, like, what would you say to them? How can they maneuver and, and, and follow in your footsteps without being blessed at those that at, the, at those intangibles that you got? Yeah, um, you got to find a partner. Like somebody got to be out there and promote the brand. Somebody got to. Somebody got to do it. Like you can't just make money without speaking and showing and, and, and building that audience. So if you are the introvert. Go get a partner that may, they may be the person and you bring them on board and you could be behind the scenes, kind of the mastermind, the strategist, and this person going to be on the front. And that's why, again, like relationships is important. You said it earlier. You're not going to be able to do things by yourself. So that's the advice that I would give somebody that's an introvert and they don't really want to be out there on social media, find a partner, build with them, have them do that. But I don't think there's no way around. It's marketing, bro. Marketing. Like every business, you need marketing. Yep. There's two ways your business is going to fail. That's if people don't know you or if people forget about you. So that means people have to know you. Use social media as a free tool. We've never had a tool where we could reach millions of people in a click of a button. No. Back in the day, bro, you got to pay hundreds of millions of dollars to get on TV and promote your business. Now you get to do it for free in your house, chilling. Listen, I, I, it is. It's no. It's no way around it. Find somebody that's gonna do the role. That's really my mm. my stance on it. Be real. No, that's game. And yeah. and um, I open something. Open. I remember having a conversation about this with somebody that opened my eyes. Is um, somebody said they was like, "Yo, business, um, social media, online persona don't have to be your real life. You can have different ideas, different thoughts." As as who you are for real, as yeah. compared to who you are as online. Not meaning like you could cap. And be like faking, faking and shit like that. But pretty much is you could flip the switch. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Hit that that character button where where the camera's on. You like you t- you tap into the character mode a little bit. But it's it's you. But it's you on ten. Where you most of the time yeah. you really just like yeah. on two. You chill yeah. Yeah. because at the end of the day with social media, I realized this is another thing I realized this shit. It really comes down to when you talk about brand build that people brand blowing up is 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 um characters. Like you could have, it's a reason why I see people all the time with the dopest game. 
Like the, they got they they know some shit. They done accomplished some shit, mm. but their personality is lack. Yeah. It's like it's really not much like people could buy into because they born. Yeah. But like like you, I could tell you will blow regardless just because you got a certain charisma, yeah. you got a certain passion when you talk. Like that's gonna attract a lot of people. And sometimes people just be like, you would talk to somebody, they be so mundane, like born low, like the, how they speak, low tone. It's like. Yo, you might not ever get to where you want to go to, cause then you gotta you gotta turn yourself into like a character for real. Mm -hmm. Cause for this internet shit, that's another yeah. thing I learned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that don't mean you gotta get it, like lose your morals, your integrity. Yeah. You yeah. stay in your morals, integrity, but you just quit turn it up a notch yeah. that you know it's gonna attract eyes and shit like that. Yeah, that's I, I agree. It's, I look at it as like if you play sports, right? Like LeBron James, he, mm -hmm. when he step on the court, he in a different zone. Yeah, you know, it's like he had. Beyonce, right? When she says she get on the stage, she's Sasha Fierce. She's Fizz, Sasha right? Fierce. That's that's that's, what it that's is. how it is. You gotta step into that zone. Don't see nobody else and go in. I do the same thing. I, this is me, on um, by nature. But yes, when You're I'm right. speaking, I'm about to do content. All right, you gonna turn, turn it, it up. up a notch? You gonna right? turn it up? Let's get it. Let's turn it up a notch. That's just how you gotta do. This is your job here. This is your, this is how you want. When? Especially when you know most people. I, I read something recently. They said the average human has a shorter attention span than a goldfish. Mm. They said a goldfish has an attention span, of, if I'm not mistaken, they said a goldfish has an eight-second attention span compared to a human has a seven-second attention span now. Mm. So knowing that, you really got to turn it on because within yeah. seven seconds, if somebody label you as born in their mind, they tune you out. Yeah. And it's going to be hard to get that person yeah. back tuned in because they are already somewhere else now. So you really got to be on... Uh, like a message to people yeah. that's listening, you really got to turn it. If you really want to be like, I want to build a brand, have a big audience, you can't come into this shit. It's, and I hate to, and I hate to say <laughs> it, it's, yeah. it, especially if you black from our community, because you could be in other spaces, be born. You could wear Bill Cosby yeah. sweater. You could chill, kick yeah. back, talk, yeah. boring. And long you got the information, they'll listen. Yeah. But in our Not, community, yeah. we like, we like yeah. flash. We yeah. so like. Duh, 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 duh. You got to come through this shit like kicking down the door yeah. is really some real shit to say for I say, real. I say this all the time. It's not about the message all the time. It's about the messenger. Sure. Because the message is out like information, financial literacy, crypto, stocks, real estate. Everybody's talking about it, right? Everybody. But somebody going to buy from a person that they could resonate with. I, I feel like this person could teach me because they've been through what I've been through. Or I like the way they teach. Or, you know, that's really what's going to separate you from anybody else. People buy and invest with People who they know, they like, they trust, they connect with. So stepping out your comfort zone, being vulnerable, like, it's just really, because I'm going to be real. I wasn't always this way. Like, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, bro. It's like no face, no case. I don't, when I first got on social media, <laughs> like, my boys had to put me on social media. They been was on Instagram. I'm like, nah, I don't mess with that, bro. I'm in the streets with it. Like, that's how I right. was, right? This, this is the crazy mindset, right? My first time I went live, I pressed live. I'm on it. Like, Three seconds, I cut it off. Like, nah, nah, this is crazy because I couldn't I did process the, same the shit. fact that people could know exactly where I'm at in real time. You know, I'm thinking about, yo, somebody know where I'm at. I'm live. They, they see my up. background. They pull up. I had to get over that. Well, so it wasn't just something I just rolled out of bed with. I had to practice, right? I remember, bro, I, I, I used to set up my iPad, put it on my kitchen table, and I would practice my speeches, practice my story in front of the iPad. I would go in. Um, do a pop, not a PowerPoint, um, the whiteboard. And I would go back from when I was born in 1992, year to date. And every year, I would put whatever the highlights are from that year. So, all right, this is the highlights. I did this, I did that this year. Then I would pull some of the highlights out and then use that as part of my story. Condense it down to one minute. Now I got a one minute version. I got a 30 second version. I got a five mm. minute version. So depending on where I'm at, so when people are like, yo, be like, yo bro, you spitting it. Because I practice it. So I know if I'm at a podcast, I got a setting where I'm, I can speak a little longer. I'm going to do the longer version. Or if I don't, I'm going to do a shorter version. But it's not nothing you just roll out of bed and do. It's just something you got to practice. Like any type of skill, whether it's real estate, public speaking, building a brand, whatever it may be, practice, practice, practice. A lot of people be rolling out of bed just trying to figure out and be like, damn, it didn't work. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. <laughs> like, what, what, I, I, did you practice? Did you prepare yourself? Like what, what, what you was doing? So. Yeah. Mm, that's hey, that's game, bro. That's yeah. game. And I, I only got only got uh, one more question for you. And uh, this last question, I like to uh, leave it off on a tip to like inspire the the, mm -hmm. the listeners, the watchers that's listening, because there's gonna be some people that's listening right now that's probably in a position 
that you was in 10 years ago. You know what I'm saying? And they like, man, they don't see a way out. They don't think it's possible to get the levels that you reach. Leave them with some um some some games, some inspiration that they could take to to, to to feel inspired so they could continue on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um the, the biggest thing that I want to say for everybody that's listening is the most powerful thing in the world is a made up mind. That's the most powerful thing. So you really got to make a decision. And I say that, and I know it sounds easier said than done. But when I got arrested and when I got kicked out of school and like when I sat down and had that conversation with my wife or girlfriend at the time and she told me what my gifts are, I literally closed my eyes, bro. And I vision, I said, all right, this is what I'm going to be. I'm going to be the young mogul. Like everything we're doing now, I had literally made a decision and walked away from anything that was going to stop me from getting there. So I would just tell anybody, um, make a decision, right? Um, have that roadmap, like write out what you want to be. Like put it, put things on your wall, vision board. That car you want, you want to see it every day. You got to stay inspired because if you fall off, it's like if you go into the gym, right? You fall off at the gym, then you're not going to be as fit as whatever. If you stop doing the podcast for a year, you ain't going to be a shark, nah. right? If you stop doing real estate for you ain't going to be a shark, right? If you ride a bike, you ain't ride it in years, it's, you're going to have to get back into it. So that's just... Life in general, when you're on your path, stay inspired. Stay around people that's going to continue investing in you, push you, um, tell you, hold you accountable. Like, that's really what I would say. Make up your mind, get in the rooms, um, and stay inspired. Mm, that's powerful, bro. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a powerful tip on leaving out. And I just want to say before we uh, wrap it up, I want to say, man, I appreciate you uh, yeah. flying out here to get this done, yeah. bro. Like, we... Yeah. It, this this was dope. We gonna have to make sure we do this again, man, for yes, real. Course. And but before I let you go, plug in all your stuff where people could uh fo- they could follow you, they could yeah. uh purchase the products, everything yeah. you got, like plug it. So this is what I, uh, if it's okay with you, yeah. I want to give out a free course. Let's that's do cool. It. Let's, let's, let's for do any, it for anybody that's 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 watching this right now. If you text millionaire, text millionaire to three four seven four two nine six four nine six, and you can get a free course. That's only for the people that's tapped in right now. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. That's at mogul lifestyle underscore. Only one underscore. Some fake pages out there. Yeah. I don't do crypto and this and that. Bitcoin. I don't do it. Um, mogul lifestyle underscore. YouTube mogul elite club where you can get longer form content. Me breaking down the game. That's where you could tap in. Let's get it. Let's get it. Y'all make sure y'all uh, tap into what he got going on. Make sure y'all follow him on all platforms as well. And then closing, y'all can follow me on all platforms at it. Uh, official Xavier Miller on Instagram. That's my new IG, man. But I'm Xavier C. Miller on everything else, so make sure y'all tap in. And that's all we got for y'all on this week's episode of Men and Mindsets Podcast. See you guys next week. Peace. Gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars. If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama. Only stay surrounded by them people. If you know they solid, elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit. Trying to learn some game, except y'all gonna talk about it. No, Deanna, speak that shit that everybody voucher. Ain't no more excuses valid. Get up off the couch and get up in your bag. To your bank account, you then account it.